Hi guys, it's time to study another chapter. This time it's going to be chapter 23. It's about electromagnetic radiation. Um, this is the first chapter that we're not going to do in one week. It turns out it's a lot of material, a lot of it's pretty different. So we're going to break this into two weeks. Uh, the first half will focus on the radiative electric field, Maxwell's equations, and the propagation of electromagnetic waves. In the second half, we'll talk about the interaction of those electromagnetic waves with materials. So we'll get into Snell's law and refraction and all that. That'll be next time. And then that leaves us only one more chapter for the rest of the semester, and that is the chapter on interference and diffraction. So that turns out to be a supplementary chapter that I'll, I'll give you a link to the Matter and Interaction website that you can download that, that guy. So let's, uh, let's talk about radiation here. I want to I want to flip to um, the right scene here. OK, very good. So uh, first of all, I want to remind you that we've encountered already two different types of electric fields, or I should say two different ways of producing electric fields. There's the Coulomb field, which is basically you have some bare charge. It produces a field, and uh, that's given by Coulomb's law and the Coulomb electric field formula. The second way we just learned last week, and that is through uh, Faraday's law, the non-Coulomb curly electric fields. And that's given by this expression of the non-Coulomb field integrated around a loop is equal to the rate of change of the magnetic flux through that loop. So that's Faraday's law. And the last version we're going to learn is the field produced by a, an accelerating charge, an accelerating charge. Um, produces a radiative electric field that turns out to be perpendicular to the R vector and um, is proportional to the acceleration. It's also inversely proportional not to R squared, but inversely proportional only to R. And so it turns out that's critically important because that's the reason we can see stars that are billions of light years away uh, if it had been only the Coulomb field going like 1 over r squared, we would never be able to see them. But because it only goes like 1 over r, you can see radiative electric fields at great distances. So let me just remind you, Coulomb's law, we all know very well at this point, is just 1 over r squared. It's proportional to r hat and the charge. Okay. Uh, Faraday's law is produced by a changing flux. So you calculate the magnetic flux through some area. And that flux, if it changes in time, produces a sort of a curly or a non-Coulomb electric field. The EMF associated with that field, which is the integral of the electric field around a closed loop, is proportional to the rate of change of the flux of the magnetic field through that loop. That's Faraday's law. And uh, there's also a, excuse me, there's also a, an extension to Faraday's law, actually, Maxwell discovered that Ampere's law was not complete, that there is an additional term that needs to be added to Ampere's law to make it symmetric with Faraday's law. And it goes like this. Instead of E dot dl around a loop equaling the rate of change of the magnetic flux through the loop, we integrate B dot dl around a loop, and we set that equal to the rate of change of the electric flux through the loop. So we calculate the electric flux in exactly the same way that we calculate the magnetic flux. It's just we use the electric field instead of the magnetic field. The rate of change of the electric flux actually appears to act almost like a current density. So it acts like a current. Actually, this is not exactly. Oh, yeah, no, it's right. It's OK. It's, it acts just like a current. Um, you multiply it by epsilon 0 and then it adds to the regular conventional current and then that gets what what gets put into uh, put into Ampere's law so anyway that's an extension if you put all this together that's how you get this new radiative form of electric field and the radiative form um, looks like this that, well here we have Coulomb's law that's our friend Coulomb's law the radiative electric field is very similar in structure to Coulomb's law um, it still has the 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0. Okay. It still has the Q, but instead of R hat, it has instead a perpendicular. So it's the perpendicular component of the acceleration. 
So rather than our hat, we're going to put an acceleration vector in there. And furthermore, rather than 1 over r squared, it only goes like 1 over r. But you can see, just looking at this formula, we have a problem. And the problem is that the units don't work. It's an electric field on the left, but we've got, instead of r hat, we've got acceleration. Instead of 1 over r squared, we've got 1 over r. So we've got an extra meters, because remember acceleration is meters per second squared, so we got an extra meters upstairs. We've got only one meter downstairs, so those meters cancel. Um, and so, and upstairs, remember, we got meters per second squared, so we got meters per second squared upstairs, canceling with, with the meters downstairs. So we're left with just one over second squared upstairs. We have no meters downstairs. So downstairs, we've got to add a meter squared and divide by a second squared in order to get everything right, so we need a velocity squared. So what velocity should we use? It turns out the correct answer is the speed of light. So we throw in a speed of light squared downstairs. That gets the units right. And then the only other thing we have to do to make it all work is to throw in, of course, an extra minus sign. So it turns out there, you know, as if the signs weren't hard enough to get right already, the radiative field has a minus sign in the formula. This is all derived in uh, section 11 of the text, so if you're interested in the derivation, you can look at it there. It really is a generalized form of Gauss's law that we're going to use to uh, to derive this. I'm not going to derive it in the slides because it's rather extensive, and at the end of the day, you end up with this formula. So uh, we're just going to use the formula. If you're interested in the derivation, of course, please go and study it. It's, it's actually pretty interesting. Um, but let's do uh, a description of how this works. Suppose I have a charge. I want to know what the field is some distance r away. So the r vector is just like the r vector in every other source problem from this semester. The Coulomb's law source, the uh, Beal-Savart law source current. The r vector goes from the thing that's producing the field to the point where I'm evaluating the field. Okay. Um, suppose the charge has some momentary acceleration. And then as a consequence of that acceleration, we, ex we see a radiative electric field at the position r, given by r. We project a onto the perpendicular direction to r. So it's, when we say a perpendicular, we're talking about perpendicular to the r vector. Okay? And then a perpendicular is what goes into the radiative field formula. And we get a radiative field that's in the opposite direction of a perpendicular times q. Now if q is negative, then the minus sign in the formula and the q cancel, the minus signs cancel, and you get a radiative field in the same direction as a perpendicular. If the charge is positive, the radiative field ends up being in the opposite direction. So um, there's also a thing called the pointing vector. The pointing vector is important because it helps us to work out the direction of the radiative magnetic field. Yes, of course, in addition to the electric field, there's a radiative magnetic field. The easiest way to work that out is to use the pointing vector, which determines the direction of propagation of energy. So the radiative magnetic field is perpendicular to the radiative electric field, but the radiative magnetic and electric field are both perpendicular to the direction of propagation. So the propagation here is from Q to the field point. So the propagation direction is in the direction of R. So V is proportional to R, and you know it's a vector that points in the same direction as R. And so that only leaves in this case, if it's got to be perpendicular to the radiative electric field, and it's got to be perpendicular to the direction of propagation, the only directions left are into and out of the page. Um, the pointing vector tells us which is the correct direction for B. It's defined as the radiative field crossed into the, the radiative electric field crossed into the radiative magnetic, magnetic field, E cross B. So that gives us the direction of propagation. The unit vector that points in the direction of propagation is equal to the unit vector that points in the radiative electric field crossed into the unit vector pointing in the direction of the radiative magnetic field. So E cross B hat, E hat cross B hat must point to the right. So B hat must point into the page in this case. So then we get the radiative magnetic field points into the page uh, to get propagation to the right. The other thing that we get from Maxwell's equations, putting the 
displacement current, which is that extra current that Maxwell discovered in with Ampere's law, and then also applying Faraday's law, we get that the magnetic field, the radiative part of the magnetic field, is the radiative part of the electric field divided by the speed of light. So that has to be there. And we'll do some in-class activities to emphasize that and see where that comes from. Um, but that's all I have for that. OK, let's do an example. So uh, suppose I have a negative charge. And I want to know what's the field over here at negative 4, negative 3 meters. It's got an acceleration, a momentary acceleration of in the negative y direction. And I want to calculate the radiative magnetic field. So um, I need to find a perpendicular. Of course, a perpendicular plus a parallel is equal to a. So let's, uh, let's see, let's pop over here to uh, a calculation I was just working on, see if I can find it. Um, so the, uh, the idea is I've got my UFPES, my charge is minus 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. I've got the speed of light. My R vector is negative 4, negative 3. There's my acceleration vector. It's got a negative Y component of acceleration. And what I'm doing is I'm taking the dot product of R hat and A. So I'm calculating, if you go back and look at the slide, I'm calculating the dot product of the A vector and R hat. So I'm getting the component of the A vector in the R hat direction. That I call that A and R. I can form that into the parallel component of acceleration by multiplying that component by R hat. So that means I've just figured out a parallel. Of course, a parallel is going to go away because we don't really care about that. But a perpendicular is a minus a parallel. I, I calculate a perpendicular as by pulling out the parallel component. And then I print that guy out. So a perpendicular turns out, uh, see if I can show it here, it's equal to 0.96 minus 1.28 times 10 to the 9 meters per second squared. So it's got an x component. You can see it's got a plus x component and a negative y component. So that worked out OK. The radiative electric field, because this charge is negative, the radiative electric field is in the same direction as a perpendicular. So it's going to end up pointing down this way. Let's see how that comes out in the calculation. It looks like it's uh, 3 and negative 4. So it, uh, it works out. Whoops. Where did my slides go here? There we go. Um, it works out just like that. Uh, and so really, you can, you can use this just like the Coulomb law formula. It's just a little more complicated because of the a perpendicular. A lot of problems, we won't even bother calculating the actual size of uh, the radiative electric field. Or we'll organize things so that a perpendicular is right along an x or y direction, so it's easy to get from the x and y components of, of a. So, um, or we can figure it out with simple trigonometry. In this case, it's a little trickier because the angles are, are more complicated. But anyway, that's the idea. So uh, hope that helps, and we'll talk to you guys soon.